Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top 10 tools that I use within Lightroom. This is such an awesome app and it is the workhorse of my editing workflow. I use it all of the time. iPhone photos, drone photos, and all of my camera pictures are edited within this app and the opportunities are endless in terms of making your photos look exactly how you want them. But I've sat down and given it a good bit of thought and these are my top 10 features that I really do put to the test on a day-to-day -day basis to give my photos just that little bit of extra creativity and get them looking exactly how I want them. So I hope you find this useful and without further ado, let's get into it. In at number one is a tool called Auto Geometry and it simply straightens up your image I find that I can't get into my edit if I haven't got the image nicely lined up. So this is something that I'll do pretty much straight away when bringing the photo in. So all you've got to do is bring your photo up that you want to straighten up, tap on the image and you have a toolbar at the bottom and you need to hit the little crop icon, which is a square with the two little arrows around the side of it. And you will see your options come up at the bottom. There, there you have the auto geometry tool. And quite simply, all you have to do is hit it and it will straighten the image up for you. Now, 90% of the time, I find this works really, really well and gets the job done. But if you do need to go in and make some tweaks, if you're not 100% happy with it, you can hit the pen tool next to it and you have a plethora of options of being able to manually control your lining up of said image. A couple of toggles that I would make sure are switched on are the upright auto tool and the constraint crop tool. This simply will reduce any white space if you've done quite a lot of movement within in the image and auto crops the image for you, which makes it a little bit quicker and easier. Up next is setting a custom white balance. I find it really useful to set this earlier on in the edit so that you have a good base plate to go from and take your edit through from a relatively neutral white balance point at the beginning. Now to do this, you bring up your image and you will be in this main editing toolbar, which is the little sliders at the bottom. And above that, you will see the color tab, which I'm already in here. You'll see white balance as shot. By default, it comes in as shot, so straight out of the camera. There are some auto settings within there, which you can try out. But in this case, I want to set it manually because I find that just a little bit easier to get the look that I'm going for. So next to where it says as shot, you'll see this little color picker tool. You can hit on that and then you have the option to move this around your screen and pick an area where you want to set the custom white balance from. So I quite want this house to be my main point here. So I'm going to move that around so I can get onto the little white spot there and then I'll drop it. And if it's something I'm happy with, I will hit the tick button and that will set it. If you're then not happy with that, you can hit the little uh, color picker again and you can move it around and maybe you can move it over here. If you pick something that's relatively close to white or gray within your image, it should get you a relatively neutral look. But I, that one was a little bit green and yellow. So I'm going to go back to the first one I chose and I'm pretty happy with that. You can play to your heart's content with this, but it does help you just get a little bit more of a neutral look. In at number three is a little graphic that can help you get your exposure right, because if you're editing on different devices with different brightnesses, it can be really difficult to ascertain whether you're over or under exposed. So I like to have my histogram on. This is the little graphic that's at the top of the screen and it shows you how well balanced your shot is. Now to turn this on, you hit the three dots on the top right hand corner and you press view options. Here you can hit show info overlays and make sure the histogram is selected. And that is pretty much it. And you will see your histogram at the top of the screen. If you're too far to the right, you're looking a little bit overexposed and things might be clipping. Or if you're too far to the left, you're potentially underexposed. It can just be a good rough guide for you to set your exposure correctly. Next up is a little bit of a creative one, and that's having a little bit of a play with the color mixer. I don't go wild in this section, but I have a tendency not to like a lot of yellows and kind of creamy greens, if you like, in my image. So for me personally, I'll often go into the color mixer tab, which is within that color toolbox. Um, you can hit it there and you can play to your heart's content with hue, saturation and luminance for all of the different colors within your image. So very often I will 
drop into the yellow here and have a little play with it. I'll often drop the saturation of it a little bit because I do sort of lean towards a little bit of a cooler image on the whole. Um, but you can also fiddle about with, with the luminance. You can see the grass changing from sort of a orangey, yellowy kind of color to a green if you slide it all the way up. Um, and literally you can play around as much as you like and you can go absolutely wild or you can be very subtle. I tend to try and go on the subtle side of things, but if there is a, co a color within your image that you don't particularly like or that, you, or that maybe you want to, you know, portray a little bit more of, you can up and down the saturation of those colors individually or change indeed their hue and saturation. It's just quite a fun thing to play with. Have a go with it. I really enjoy it and it can kind of help you create maybe a little bit of a style of your own. In a number five is a radial masking tool. I love masking tools within Lightroom. It is a whole topic of itself and I'm just going to keep this one really brief. And I think that the radial gradient is my favorite and most commonly used. But if you want to know a bit more about masking, you can check it out up here because I made a whole video in of itself. But it's quite simply, I use it to draw attention to certain areas of the image that I want the viewer's eye to go to. So for, for example, in this instance, I've taken this quite nice photo of this little hut out in Snowdonia National Park. Now, I might want to just draw a little bit more attention to the hut. It has quite a nice light, light on it, but I can almost create like a custom vignette on it. If you put a vignette on it by standard within the effects tool, it's just going to darken around the edges of the whole image. But because that hut is slightly offset, maybe I just want to have a little custom one. So what I'm going to do to do this is hit this little round tool at the bottom of my toolbar. It's got a circle with a dotted hash line around the edge of it, and that's going to bring up your masking options. You hit the plus button and then you hit radial gradient and you can draw on your gradient. So I'm going to draw a nice circle around my hut. The red area is the affected area. So in this instance, I actually want to darken around the edge. So I need to invert that mask. So there's a little button on the left here, which has like a square and a hash and a kind of dark light. So if you hit that, it will instantly flip it easy. And then you can literally edit as you wish. So I'll come into the light section and probably what I'll do is just drop my shadows a little bit and maybe drop my exposure just a tiny bit. Less is more here. You don't need to go too crazy. And that is pretty much it. You can hit the tick button and you are done. Now there is one other thing that I can suggest doing here. Sometimes I like to do a bit of both. So I like to darken the outside a little bit more and bring up a little bit more light on the actual subject. So you can go back into your masking tool there and you will see the mask that you've already created. If you hold down on it, you will get a whole load of options. In this instance, you can actually duplicate and invert the mask. So I'm going to duplicate and invert. And now I can just maybe lighten that a bit because it looks a bit dark. So I can just bring my exposure up very slightly and just make that little hut pop. As I say, the possibilities are endless with this and that's a really simple way to use it, but it is very, very effective. Next up, presets. Love them, hate them. Sometimes they can be useful. I don't use them all the time, but just occasionally I like to have a little play with them. And again, less is more and just use them quite minimally. Now, I have a few sets from creators that I've followed over the years. At the moment, I'm really enjoying this set that I bought from Olia. He's a, like a tech creator. Really, really nice presets that are quite minimal. So they suit my kind of style. But the real thing I wanted to share about presets is how you can adjust them. As I said and touched on, I want to use them minimally. So you now have the option within Lightroom to adjust the intensity of them. So for example, this image here, I just took like a behind the scenes image of my camera when I was out hiking in Snowdonia. Again, I used one of Olia's presets on it and I really liked the look, but it was just a little bit too strong. So I choose this 0307 and then you can see on the image to the left where it gives you a little preview, there's a slider. So if you hit that, you can then adjust the amount so I can drop it right down. And oftentimes I'll only put it on to like, you know, like, 20, 30 kind of percent, and then you can hit the X button and I'm happy with that and how it looks. It doesn't have to be too wild. Of course, you can go the other way as well. Probably wouldn't suggest doing that. But if you've either made any presets yourself that you like of your own style, I have some of my own as well, or you have a creator that you quite like the style of and you just want to use it as a little bit of inspiration and maybe a starting point, but you can just dial it back and just keep it a little less intense is a really, really useful tool. Now, with all of this editing going on, it's often incredibly useful to be able to assess where you've come from. So a before and after. Really easy way to do this on mobile is to come into the image that you've been playing around with and you hold your thumb or your finger on the image 
and it will drop back to how you started and let go and it will bring you back to your edit really quick really simple but incredibly useful just for seeing where you've come from and if you're happy with your edit or if you actually like the image a little bit more before you started now despite our best efforts from time to time there are unwanted objects or people within our images especially in the background of images that we just don't want there it can make it look a bit cluttered and a bit messy and it can take away from the subject itself so the erase tool or the remove tool within Lightroom has become absolutely amazing. And I'm actually making, or I might have made it as at the time of this video coming out, uh, a video all about the new generative AI within this tool. It is absolutely wicked. It's been a bit dodgy in previous times and I've often had to jump over into Photoshop if I wanted to do uh, a bit more of a complex removal, but this tool has been a bit of a game changer and I'm loving using it. So for example, here I've got this a uh, picture of our lovely family dog, Wilma. She's very cute. Um, and I don't really like that tree in the background or that tree stump, should I say. So I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit here just so I can get a bit closer. And on the bottom toolbar, you'll see this eraser style tool. Now, if you hit that, make sure you hit generative AI on. You can adjust the size of your tool. And I just like to zoom in so I can get as tidy on my selection as possible and you literally just cover it so the red is covering it and I will let it do its work it says you know connecting to the cloud and it's using AI it does take a little bit of time but trust me it's going to be worth it uh voila <laughs> it's literally gone now you can hit refine and there's a few options you can change your opacity and it actually gives you three variations of the removal but to be quite honest with you that is pretty impressive. And then if you zoom out, I would be impressed if you could notice that I've done a removal there. So if you've got something in your image, you don't want to be there, give this one a whirl. My last two Lightroom mobile tips are a little bit more around kind of organization and sharing of images. But firstly, if you're out and about and you know that you might not have good data, I would highly recommend saving local copies. Now, I do this when I'm traveling a lot. So if I come into an album here, I'll come into my trips. For example, my Bali trip from last year. I've got the album there. If you hit these three little dots, you have the options to store locally. If I hit that, I'm not going to do that because it's going to download them all to my phone. But if I hit that toggle, it will then save all of those copies locally because otherwise it's just holding them up in the cloud and you can get a smart preview. But if you want to try and edit without data, it becomes really slow and you're only getting a smart preview. So if you're on the road and you want to edit, I would strongly recommend storing locally. You can undo this after the fact because otherwise you're going to clog up your phone or whichever device you're using, but it's a really nice way to edit when you haven't got data. So if you're going on a plane trip or somewhere you know you haven't got a good Wi-Fi or good connection, this is really, really handy. Last but not least, it's all about sharing images. As photographers, we love to share our pictures, but unfortunately apps like Instagram kind of constrain you a little bit into what kind of photos fit within their crop aspect ratios. It's really annoying, but I found by adding frames, it can still make your photo take up a full screen. And I really like this tool. I use it actually for things like Instagram, but I also use it for exporting photos for videos I post on YouTube as well, just to give them a little bit of an extra pop. So if I take this cool photo that I took when I was away again in Madeira, um, you can hit the share button. You can just save the copy to your device, but you'll also see this option to say add border and share. Now I can add this into a border that's just even, gives it a nice white border, or I can choose whichever uh, preset that they've added on here. And then you quite simply hit save or share, and you can save the image to your device, or you can just like share it with whoever you want. Really nice useful tool, particularly good if you're shooting a land landscape image um, and it can just help your photo stand out and pop a little bit. Now, that is my top 10 tools. I really hope that wasn't too long. I hope you stuck with me. There's chapters below if you want to fiddle about and jump, jump back to them. Any questions, please do drop them down below. And if you have any tools that you think are an absolute game changer within Lightroom and I've missed them out, please do drop them down below as well. It was a struggle to pick my top 10 to be honest, but I thought you might find this useful. I hope you did, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.